What's up everybody? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to use QuickBooks Online to manage your accounts payable and your accounts receivable. I teach people how to start their own bookkeeping business. I teach people how to do bookkeeping and I teach business owners how to do their own bookkeeping. I am a QuickBooks expert and a bookkeeping expert. I've had my own bookkeeping business for the past three years. I pretty much know everything there is to know about QuickBooks Online, and I make these videos just so that I can teach other people everything that I have learned so that you can run your business more efficiently. If you need help with your bookkeeping, I'd be happy to help. Check out my website, harrisburgbookkeeping.com, and if you wanna schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation just to talk about you and your business a little bit more, there's a link in the description of this video. You can schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation anytime. And finally, if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel because I am posting new videos every week teaching you more about QuickBooks and bookkeeping. Okay, so let's get started. This right here is QuickBooks Online. It's just a sample company. And I'm going to teach you, first of all, how to manage your accounts receivable inside of QuickBooks. So there's two things I need to tell you first. There's a difference between a receipt and an invoice. So if somebody pays you today for work that you completed today, you just need to give them a receipt. You do not need to create an invoice if you've already been paid. So if you, for example, if you are a landscaping company and maybe you went to somebody's house and you mowed their grass and they paid you on the spot, all you need to do is create a sales receipt. So just in the plus new button in the top left hand corner, just click on sales receipt. And then just, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to fill this out. It's pretty self-explanatory. Customer date, product or service, the amount, pretty self-explanatory. But this is the only thing you need to do if somebody pays you on the spot. You do not need to create an invoice. There's no need to. However, if you're a landscaping company, you mowed somebody's grass today, and you're going to give them an invoice because they have not paid you yet, then you want to create an invoice. So the same concept plus new in the top left-hand corner of your QuickBooks online account. And here, instead of receipt, we're gonna type invoice. So same thing here, whatever the customer is, if you wanna enter in the customer's email, you can, and then you can actually send the invoice directly from QuickBooks, which is pretty nice. And then the, the terms here, this is important. If it's due on receipt, that means the money is due as soon as they receive the invoice. Net 10 or net 15 or net 30 means that the, the money is due 10 days after the invoice date or 15 or 30 days after they receive the invoice. So that's a very important distinction to make. Don't just make it net 30 and expect to be paid the next day. So product or service, the amount of the invoice, make it as detailed as you want. And then, like I said, you can send it directly to your customer's email address straight through QuickBooks, or you can actually download a PDF copy of the invoice, and then you can print it out, or you can email it directly to your client. So once you've created your invoices, it's very important that you track your accounts receivable. And you can actually do that by going to the reports tab here on the left-hand side. And we're going to search for accounts receivable. And then we wanna pull up the aging detail report. The summary report is not going to have as much detail, obviously, as this report. So we wanna look at the AR aging detail. I recommend if you're creating a lot of invoices, you should check this on a weekly basis. So this will show you all of your outstanding invoices that have not been paid yet. So this is a very useful report to kind of see your oldest invoices are gonna be up top here. And then you can also go to the sales tab on the left. You can click on invoices and here you can see all of your invoices that have been unpaid and you can look at invoices from 2022 or you can look at invoices from the last six months or last month or this month, you get the idea. But here is another list of all of your unpaid invoices. So it's really important. Oh, and one other thing, you can actually select multiple invoices and you can do batch actions and you can send a reminder to all of your customers directly from QuickBooks by just highlighting all of them and doing a batch action, which is super, super helpful. And also, I don't want to forget to talk about this. You can go into your account and settings and you can go to the sales tab and you can scroll all the way down here to reminders and you can do automatic invoice reminders and you can have your first reminder going out seven days after the due date. So as soon as the invoice is overdue on the seventh day, 
you will the QuickBooks will automatically send a reminder for you. And then you can do the same thing for 30 days after the due date. And then you can see you can do up to three reminders. So this is a super cool feature to automate your AR collections and reminders and notifications. This will automatically send emails to your customers. Keep in mind, you need to have an accurate and valid email address for every customer in order for QuickBooks to send them a reminder. Okay, so we've created invoices, we've tracked accounts receivable, we've sent follow-ups, and now we finally got paid. So somebody mails you a check, you open up your mail, you look at the check, and you have received payment for that invoice. So now you go to receive payment, and you just search for the customer, and you choose the invoice that has been paid. Obviously, that whatever the date is. Now here is an important distinction. You have two options here. You can deposit the money to undeposited funds, or you can deposit it directly into your checking account. If you are just using mobile deposit and taking a picture of the check as soon as you receive it, I recommend it's easier just deposit the funds into your checking account directly. However, if you are not going to the bank for a couple days or a couple weeks, then you can deposit the check into undeposited funds. It's just very important that you reconcile your undeposited funds and make sure that you don't have a bunch of sales sitting in your undeposited funds because that will cause serious problems with your profit and loss statement. Okay, so for this example, we're just going to deposit the, this receive payment into your checking account for $239. You're going to use your cell phone. You're going to do mobile deposit with that check. So now it'll be a nice, clean, one-for-one -one transaction. There will be a bank deposit on your bank account for $239. So we're going to save that. And then the final step, this is very important. This is where I see the majority of people making mistakes. You're going to go to your bank feed and you're going to find that bank transaction. It's probably going to show up 48 hours after you did the, the mobile deposit with the check. But this is so super important. You want to make sure that you match the bank deposit to the receive payment. So I see so often that instead of matching it, people will just add it as a separate transaction. And this is where you start double counting your income. And if you've ever had this problem, then I'm sure me just saying double counting your income has hit your heart in a sweet spot. Because if this happens to you, it's very stressful because you don't know why your income's saying 200,000 when it should have only been 120,000. And you're freaking out because you're gonna end up paying twice as much in taxes. So don't make this mistake. I, I promise you, I see it happen almost on a weekly basis. It's, it's a very easy mistake to happen. So you just want to make sure that you are correctly matching the bank deposit to the receive payment. Very, very important. And you can figure out if you've made a mistake by reconciling your checking account at the end of the month. You want to look for any unusual transactions that have not cleared your checking account when you do all of that by reconciling your accounts. If everything I've just said completely stresses you out and you have no idea what I'm talking about, you might want to consider hiring a professional to help manage your bookkeeping. Okay, now let's move on to accounts payable. So the exact same concept, except kind of the opposite. Instead of somebody owing you money, now you owe somebody else money. So I'm not talking about whenever you go to Lowe's or Home Depot and you swipe your credit card and you pay for something the same day. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about instead, let's say you hire a landscaping company and they mow your grass and they give you a bill and they say, hey, please pay this. And you say, okay, I will pay this next week. So you owe somebody money. So same concept here at top left-hand corner. We're going to go plus new. And instead of invoice, now we're going to click bill. So just like you fill out your invoice, instead of a customer, you're going to fill out the vendor, the terms, the bill date, the due date, the category, whatever, independent contractor, supplies and materials, landscaping company, bookkeeper, accountant, attorney, whatever the category is, whatever the amount is. And then you're going to save that bill. And now this has created an accounts payable. So the exact same way that I showed you, you can look up an accounts receivable aging detail report. You can also look up an accounts payable aging detail report by going to this reports tab on the left-hand side and just search accounts payable aging detail. And then you can get a nice clean report of all of the outstanding bills that you owe. If you only have one or two bills, not a big deal. It's probably not going to be difficult for you to manage. However, if you start having 10, 20, or 30 bills on a regular basis that need to be paid in 15 or 30 days, you're going to need to look at your reports so that you can accurately manage your bills and your accounts payable. 
Now the same concept as receiving payment, we're also going to pay our bills directly in QuickBooks and you just click on pay bills and you have a couple options here. So you wanna make sure that you choose the appropriate account that you're using to pay the bill. Maybe you paid the bill with a credit card directly online or maybe you're mailing them a check. So whatever account you're using to pay the bill, you wanna make sure that you properly select that account here and then whatever the date is, um, probably most likely today, and then the check number. So you can actually print checks directly from QuickBooks or you can just not worry about printing checks and then we can just select whatever bills that you're paying and then let me move my face here real quick and then just you're going to over here once you've selected the bills once you've entered the, the amount verify make sure everything looks correct you can either save and print or save and close and then either it's going to print the checks for you or it's just going to save and close and it is just going to create a bank transaction inside of your quickbooks so now we can X out of this. And then let me show you one last thing, the exact same concept as receiving payment. You also want to make sure that whenever the money comes, because if you mail a check today, it's not going to clear your bank tomorrow or even the next day. It might take three to five days for the mail to show up and then it's going to take a couple days for them to deposit the check. So it might be seven to 14 days after you mail the check when the, the check actually clears your account. So now it's very important once you've clicked plus new and clicked paid bills now the final step is in your bank feed once that check finally clears you go in here and you find the bank transaction and you match it same concept it's really important that you correctly match these transactions in the bank feed to the manual transactions that you've created by paying bills and receiving payments so i hope this brief tutorial on managing accounts payable and accounts receivable was helpful if you need any additional help, feel free to schedule a consultation with me. I would be happy to work with you.